gone through the majority of the accounting cycle, we are now ready to do the culmination of all this work that we've been doing, and that is to prepare the financial statements. So the financial statements are prepared directly from the adjusted trial balance that we created in the last video. The adjusted trial balance is the trial balance that we do after we've made all of our adjusting entries. So from the adjusted trial balance, we'll be able to make the income statement, the statement of retained earnings, and the balance sheet. So here is our adjusted trial balance from the previous videos that we saw. And here we have all of our accounts, their balances, whether they're debit or credit. And typically this is the way you would see a trial balance. You would see assets, liabilities, owner's equity, revenues, expenses. That's the way you would see them outlined here. So again, the first statement that we would make would be the income statement. <clears throat> Recall that, that financial statements have a particular order that they're created because information flows from one to the other. So we start with the income statement. So revenues minus our expenses, we pull that from the adjusted trial balance and we find net income to be $33,000. Net income then flows down to the statement of retained earnings as our, um, which is added to beginning retained earnings, which in this case is zero. And then we subtract out our dividends, which is also on the adjusted trial balance. And that gives us our ending retained earnings. That number will then flow through to our balance sheet, the equity section of our balance sheet. And then we'll pull all the assets, liabilities, and other owner's equity um, accounts into our balance sheet. And we find that total assets are $217,500. And once we add in that ending retained earnings number from our statement of retain retained earnings, we find that liabilities plus owner's equity is also $217,500. Once we've prepared our financial statements, then we need to get our books ready for the next period. So to do that, we need to create our closing entries. So the basic process of closing entries is to reduce the balance of the temporary or nominal accounts to zero. This is to prepare the accounts for the next period's transactions because we want to start our revenues and expenses at zero. To transfer all income statement account balances to the retained earnings account in owner's equity, and the balance sheet, which is the asset, liability, and equity accounts, are not closed. Remember, those are permanent accounts um, or real accounts. And the dividends are closed directly to retained earnings. So let's look at these closing entries. Typically, there are four closing entries, but some companies do not use an income summary, so you may not see it. Um, you may not see it exactly this way. Sometimes revenues are closed directly to retained earnings and expenses are closed directly to retained earnings. But in this case, we're going to use an income summary. And an income summary is simply a very temporary account. It just kind of appears and disappears right during closing process. It's the only time it, you would see it. And it actually computes net income. So if we look at this, we're going to first start out with dividends here at the top. Just close dividends directly to retained earnings. So dividends carry a uh, debit balance. So to get rid of that, you would have to credit dividends and debit retained earnings. Remember, retained earnings carries a credit, a normal credit balance. So when you debit retained earnings, it decreases retained earnings. That's exactly what we expect dividends to do. So in this case, we're happy because we are debiting retained earnings for dividends. So it makes sense to us. The puzzle pieces fit together. Now, revenues carry a credit balance. So to get rid of a credit balance, we need to debit revenue, and we're going to credit that amount to something called the income summary. So now we've got our revenue sitting in that income summary account, and then we're going to close all of our expense accounts to that income summary as well. So keep in mind, expenses carry debit balances. So to get rid of those debit balances, we would have to credit all of those, all of those individual expense accounts, each one individually, and debit them all to the income summary. So now in that income summary, just picture the T account in your mind. You've got all those expenses, those $73,000 in expenses on the debit side of the income summary, and you've got your revenues on the credit side of the income summary. So the balance in the income summary should be the amount of your net income from your income statement, which is $33,000. We don't want an income summary. We want to close the income summary then, or net income, 
to retained earnings. So to get rid of the credit balance in the income summary, we would have to debit the income summary for $33,000 and credit retained earnings for $33,000. And again, remember, a credit increases retained earnings, which is exactly what we expect net income to do. So it makes sense to us. And then finally, once you've closed out all the temporary accounts, you can create your final trial balance, which is the last step in the accounting cycle, the post-closing trial balance. So all the accounts left would be your balance sheet accounts, and all of the debit balances should total to the same thing as your credit balances. In this case, they do. So we're happy, but again, remember, just because the trial balance balances does not mean we have done every single thing correctly.